Hello everyone and welcome to the RV Inspection and Care podcast and video. I'm Dwayne, I'm a certified RV inspector, and today we're going to be talking about how to prevent and get rid of mice in your RV. Yes, mice are a very common problem for RVers. Nobody wants them in their home with them. Not only are they dirty and unclean, but they can be very destructive. They can cost you a lot of money in repairs in an RV in a very short time. So why do mice like RVs so much? Well, the honest truth is they're just like any animal. They're looking for shelter, water, and food. RVs have all of those things, and they tend to be right there in their habitat more often. Now, we have had mice problems ourselves at times in the past, and I'm going to explain to you how we dealt with them successfully just a little later in the video. But right now, what I want to talk about is how to prevent mice in the first place, how to keep them out. Number one is seal up all the holes that you can find in your RV where they might gain access. Pay special attention to things like power cords and water hoses and tires and uh, mud flaps and places like that where they can have access to get into your RV. They climb up on those things and then start looking for holes. So find the holes and plug them however you can, make sure you get those holes sealed up. Number two on the prevention list is use very strong smells to keep mice out of the RV. There are certain smells that have been known to work well, like for instance, peppermint oil, Irish spring soap shavings, mothballs, dryer sheets, and even Tomcat makes a commercial uh, mouse repellent that seems to work as well too. So these are great ways to keep mice from even coming in in the first place. They just don't like these strong smells and they leave. Number three on the prevention list is using Predator P. Maybe you've never heard of that, but it is available online. You can find it on Amazon. It's actual urine from animals like coyotes and wildcats and so on. You just sprinkle it around your RV. They smell it and it scares them away. They don't come in. Number four on the prevention list is using lights at night all around the RV, like a string light that just encircles your RV. And why? Because mice don't really like to be in lit areas. They like small, dark places where they feel a little bit safer. So lights could be a cheap and easy way at night to keep them from coming around your RV. Number five, remove all the food sources. So if they got in, they really can't find anything to sustain them. Use plastic containers for the food that you have in there that could be accessed by mice. So do everything you can to remove food sources. Number six, some have used ultrasonic repellers as well. And these are little devices that you plug into the wall sockets in your RV. They set up a very high pitched sound that doesn't bother humans. You don't even hear it, but apparently it does bother mice. The thing that I've heard about these is you've got to use enough of them. You can't just put one or two in your RV and think you've got it covered. You've got to really use them to the point that they're very effective. All right, so those are ways to prevent mice from coming into your RV. The next question is, what if you already have a mouse in your RV? Well, here's my recommendation, don't wait. Don't sit around and think about it. Address that situation quickly. Get right on it. Prevent as much damage as you possibly can. Now, some have used milder methods to deal with a mouse that's already in the RV. For instance, they might start putting out strong odors and scents 
the ones that I mentioned earlier, and it does work on some mice, it really does. But the thing you gotta understand about those kind of measures is they're inconsistent. You have people that swear by them on the one hand, and then you'll have other people that are giving us a report that, hey, the mice went right by it, or they ate it, or something along that line. So it's very inconsistent when you're using strong scents and smells. So in most cases, when you have a mouse already setting up a living arrangement in your RV, you're probably going to have to use stronger measures. And when we are talking about that, we're probably talking about a lethal way of dealing with them. And I understand some are very hesitant to do that, but here is the bottom line on it. These lethal measures do work well. Number one on the lethal way of dealing with mice is mouse traps. Yes, they're old technology. Yes, they've been around forever, but you know what? They actually work and tend to work very well. Now you might try the humane type of trap where it, uh, you put bait in it and the mice goes in and then the door shuts and then you can take the mouse and release it somewhere far away from your RV. You can do that, I will say this, those traps don't work as well as the good old fashioned mouse trap that we know with the big spring on it. But it also means that you've got to stay after it. You've got to watch and check them regularly so that you can release the mouse on its own. Number two on the list is poison. And yes, it works. There's no question about it. A lot of people don't like it, but it does work. The thing you've got to remember is that if the mouse dies in your RV, it's probably going to smell. It may go somewhere that you can't get to. So that can be very frustrating. The number three lethal method of working to eradicate mice is sticky pads. And the way they work is that there's an attractant in the middle of the pad. They go to get it and they get stuck and they cannot move around and eventually they die. Well, sticky pads work and they're very good for tight areas like ceilings because you can't put a regular uh, mouse trap up in that area. There's just not enough room, but a nice thin sticky pad can work in these tight areas. All right, those are the three lethal methods of working to eradicate mice. What I recommend is you need to first determine where the mice are in your RV. Are they actually in the living space with you? That's a good question. Or are they just in the walls or maybe the ceilings instead? You need to know where they are to be able to target them. Now, ourselves, we heard a mouse in our ceiling. Believe me, they have a, a sound of their little claws moving across the ceiling. And so we heard that. We think that the access area is somewhere in the engine area of our motorhome. And we've looked and looked, we cannot find the entry area at this point, but I'm still working on it. And hopefully we can get that completely sealed up. But at any rate, mice got in. So we searched and we wanted to find out, are they actually in the living area itself? We took all the stuff out of our drawers and our cabinets. What you're looking for there is mouse droppings. That's evidence that they are in there. We found nothing. So clearly they were restricted to the ceiling at that point. The problem with RV ceilings, they are very narrow and they're hard to access. So what we did is we pulled down the air conditioning ducts and that gave us access to that little small space in between the ceiling of the inside of the RV and the actual exterior of the RV. But you could also take down vent covers, uh, light fixtures, anything that you can find in the ceiling that can be lowered down and give you access to that small space up there in the ceiling. 
we used two devices to deal with the mouse that was already there, and we used lethal methods. Uh, we used both traps and glue pads. Now, the way we use the traps is that we actually put them outside the RV around those areas where the mice could get up and get in to the RV. And uh, so we put them in those places. We also put glue pads in the ceiling, um, about eight of them up there all together. Now, the good news is we didn't need any traps in the living area because like I said, they really weren't there. That was also good because we have a pet. We have a dog. And if you put a normal mouse trap down, a dog can go for that bait that's there and get a nose beating. So you don't want that to happen. If you have pets, there are traps that are sealed all around the, the, the bait is inside and they go in and get trapped there. So you could use that if you have pets. Now, what are the results that we got with the methods we used? Well, we caught two mice outside the RV before they could even get in. And I thought that was pretty good. And we caught two mice in the ceiling with the glue pads. Now, here's what we did. If they get the glue pad and get stuck, they can take that pad off somewhere and you can't retrieve it. So we tied a string to every glue pad and then tied that to the air conditioning duct. And so when the mice expired, we were able to just take down the duct and the glue pad came with it. We just emptied it right in a bucket and then removed the mice from the RV. So that's a way to make sure that you can not only catch the mouse, but then get it out of the RV afterward. Now, what do we bait our, our uh, mice eradication tools with? Well, we baited them with number one, a raisin. If it's the regular normal mousetrap, we put a raisin in there with peanut butter around it. And that seemed to work very well. On the mouse pads, we used Tomcat mouse attractant. And you know what? That worked very well too. So it, whatever works for you is good, but those are the things we use. What's the results for us? Well, overall, we're actually satisfied with what happened. Let me say this. I don't like killing mice. I don't like killing anything. That's for sure. But in this case, we could be talking about thousands and thousands of dollars of damage and a lot of time going into fixing the issues that go along with it. So I really kind of felt like I had no alternative but to use these lethal methods that actually get results, and they did. I hope the ideas that I've shared with you in this video will help you think then about ways that you could adjust it to your needs and get the results that you want. And that way you can keep your RV mouse free from now on. Well, that's it for now. Have safe and happy travels, my friends. Until next time. Mm -hmm.